Before I begin, a big shout out to one of our coffee club members, Valerie Young, for the inspiration behind this video. She kind of thought it'd be a good idea to talk about milk. And this is one of a couple of videos I've got planned. So thank you for the inspiration, Valerie. Now, I'm going to begin by talking about my coffee heritage or coffee drinking heritage, if that's the right word. I grew up in the 1970s in a small rural village and probably like many people in my generation, I grew up on instant coffee. Nescafe, Mellow Birds, Maxwell House, they were the coffees we drank. Spoonful of coffee, boiling water, splash of cold milk and about three teaspoons of sugar and you were sorted. And for that very, very luxurious drink, you'd forgo the boiling water and you'd make it with hot milk. Spoonful of instant coffee, hot milk poured on top. Now, how we heated the milk was really interesting. We'd put a pan on the stove, put milk in, and we would heat it. And we would know when it was hot enough if the milk started to creep up the pan. And if we weren't quick enough or we were concentrating on something else entirely, often the milk would boil over. But what's really important to understand is that we judged the temperature, the readiness of the milk by that boiling point. Then we spent about 20 minutes waiting for the coffee to cool down before we could actually drink it. Now I mentioned that story because today I drink my coffee at around about 55, 60 degrees Celsius, which is about half the temperature that I used to. And there is a little bit of a conflict or a mismatch maybe between the temperature that some coffee shops want to serve their coffees at and what many consumers expect. So today I'm going to talk about the various temperatures and why certain temperatures in milk heating and foaming are really important. So I've lined up five jugs here. They've all got the same amount of milk in. I'm using full fat milk for this one. Um, I've got a milk foaming thermometer and I'm going to work through the temperature ranges starting at 40 degrees and going all the way up to 80 degrees. And I'll stop along the way taste them, talk about them, and explain the key characteristics of each temperature stage. There are solid fats in milk, and as we heat them, those solids start to melt. And it takes kind of up to about 45 degrees and beyond for those fats to fully melt and become liquid. And whilst they're solid, or whilst we're in a semi-solid state, they're going to disrupt foam production. So what we have here around that 40 degree range is a milk that's quite liquidy in its texture and the foam is gonna break down and break up quite readily, quite easily. It's gonna be quite unstable. And in terms of its taste, Unsurprisingly, it tastes like milk. Um, I expect my milk drinks to taste sweet, and this one, it's, it's there. There's some sweetness there. It's not as sweet as I like my milk, and obviously it's nowhere near warm enough. I mean, I know I like my coffee's cooler, but this is a little bit on the cool side. The reason it's not quite as sweet is that lactose, where we get the sweetness in milk, is only 16 hundredths as sweet as sugar. So although it's going to be a little bit sweet, it's lacking something. A little bit cool, a little bit lacking in sweetness and an unstable foam. So let's go a bit higher. Let's go up to around about the 50 degree mark and see what happens. And I have got a lovely looking foam on top. Very shiny, very tight foam. Pouring nicely. Let's see how it tastes. Again, the flavour of milk is the most dominant thing there. Again, it might sound strange. The sweetness is becoming a lot more apparent, but it's still a little bit lacking. And again, at 50 degrees, which is kind of the minimum recommended temperature for kind of coffee-based drinks, it's a little bit on the cool side. It would be too cool in my book to serve as a coffee, but we're getting there. Shiny, tight foam on top, looking very stable as I spin it. 
Now, the important thing to realize at around about 60 degree mark is that as we're steaming and heating milk, the proteins in the milk are starting to unravel and they are forming blankets around those air bubbles that we're creating. And it's that kind of blanketing of the air bubbles that stabilizes the foam. And around about the 60 degree mark, 55 to 65 degrees, we have actually got enough of those kind of unraveling proteins to nicely blanket and look after that um, foam of ours and stabilize that foam. And in terms of taste, now the sweetness is kicking in. It's a lot, lot sweeter than at 50 degrees. And again, that's in part because the lactose has broken down into smaller compounds that are sweeter. And also at 60 degrees, our taste buds can perceive sweetness better or easier. So in that range, 55 to 65 degrees, we've almost got a perfect storm, if you like. We have got the lactose breaking down into sweeter compounds. We've got our taste buds able to perceive the sweetness better. And we've got those unraveling proteins, just the right amount of them to fully stabilize our foam. And if you want to pour latte art, I tend to find at this temperature, my latte art pours so much better. So at 70 degrees, the foam still looks good. It's got a nice sheen to it. Very tight microfoam. Maybe as I pour it, I can hear it kind of fizzing or hissing away. Maybe lacking a little, little bit of stability here, possibly. And it's the taste that changes. The sweetness has taken a big dip here. Just that 10 degree leap. I'm gonna go back. It's so much sweeter at 60 degrees than it is at 70 degrees. And I'm perceiving kind of a loss in mouthfeel as well. The 60 degree milk feels thicker, whereas by 70 degrees, there's a thinness to it. Now, of course, what's happening here is a couple of things. We're moving out of that range that our taste buds best perceive sweetness, but also we're now starting to kind of cook or bake the milk. And as well as loss of sweetness, it's starting to take on what I perceive today to be unpleasant tones. I mean, when I was growing up, this was exactly what we were drinking, boiling milk, but it takes on a cooked taste, a baked taste. And it's that kind of taste that's gonna jar or conflict a little bit with the coffee that goes into this. So there's a couple of things that became really apparent when I steamed this milk. First and foremost, you could see the quality of the foam breaking down as you went past 70 degrees and on up towards 80 degrees. But secondly was the smell. I could smell that kind of cooked, baked milk flavor coming through, even at a distance. And even as I spin this, I get wafts of a cooked milk flavor. So not a great foam to pour with if you want it. And even as I'm pouring that into the cup, I can smell this flavor, this tone coming through. So if you were looking to perfect your latte out, for example, if you're heating milk in that 70, 80 degree range, it's just not gonna pour so well for you. And it's hot, but the sweetness is almost, it's almost gone. It's losing even more mouthfeel. Sweetness has gone the way down and that cook taste is becoming a lot more apparent. It's almost, I grew up um, being made rice puddings and it's kind of like that baked tone in the milk. And although it reminds me very much of my childhood because that's how we heated the milk, it's not the kind of milk that's gonna complement my coffee really well. So let's just consider for a minute the kind of impact this has on your typical barista serving in a coffee shop. A lot of our baristas are really proud and really desperately want to serve you the best possible coffee. So they're gonna produce a really nice espresso, foam that jug of milk in the 55 to 65 degree range and pour a beautiful coffee, with beautiful latte art. But for a lot of people, that's too cold. 
they come from a time when heating milk was boiling milk and letting it cool. And you can't let it cool to get back to this point. Once you've cooked in that flavor, once you've baked that flavor, once you've broken up those proteins as far as you have, you ain't gonna get back to here again. So it's an interesting conflict that can go on in our coffee shops. A barista wanting to serve coffee at its very best and customers who want something a little bit hotter and maybe don't quite appreciate what the coffee shop and baristas are trying to do. The beauty of having an espresso machine at home is you can try this for yourself. Grab yourself one of these milk foaming thermometers. Uh, they're really cheap. Just bear in mind that they lag a little bit. So you need a good five to 10 degree um, lag going on. So you need to stop five to 10 degrees before the temperature you want. Try pouring yourself a 50 degree, 60 degree, 70, 80 degree milk. Taste it by itself and then try pouring it into coffee to see how it feels to pour it. And then you can work out which temperature you really prefer your milk at. If you do have a go, please let me know how you get on. I'd love to hear where your preferred temperature is and what you found out. Uh, thanks so much for your subscribes and likes. Uh, they are really appreciated. They really help us spread the word about great coffee and about our business in general. Um, in the meantime, thanks for watching.